Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, are you forgetful? Sometimes I can be forgetful. If you came up to me on a Sunday morning and asked me to have a prayer for a specific person, I will probably forget. Unless you give me a note and you write their name down or you write the concern down, I am most likely going to forget. We are all forgetful. Have you ever made a list of people to give Christmas cards to or to buy a Christmas gift or to make a phone call only to forget to do so? Or worse yet, you forget to even write the person's name down. We are forgetful. Sometimes my wife would tell me something and I would say yes, but because I'm more of a visual learner, unless I see it written down somewhere or put it in my calendar, I won't remember. I tend to forget easily. Sometimes we forget things because we are busy with so many other things, with so many concerns, with so many issues, whether it be at work or at church or just in our relationships. And so being forgetful can be a very common problem. And it doesn't mean that we don't care about the things. It's just that sometimes when we age, we are less forgetful. And as we age, sometimes we start to remember things again from way back. Forgetfulness. How can we become less forgetful? Well, I remember as a child, they said, tie a string around your finger and that will help you to remember. Well, I guess they call that a mnemonic. And the whole idea is that it's a little bit of a trigger to help you. So if your mom says, remember to buy milk on your way home from school, you, every time you see that string on your finger, you think, oh, okay, I, I need to remember to go buy milk and bring it home after school. And the thing is, you have to remember to take that string off. Because if you don't take it, you might end up buying two gallons of milk to bring home. Or sometimes another way to be less forgetful is to use acronyms. And so we have acronyms like CFAN, Christ for All Nations, Lutheran Church. Sometimes when things are complicated, we can learn to remember just because we can use an acronym for things. They're mnemonics so that we can be less forgetful. Sometimes when it comes to things in the Bible, we can be forgetful too. Not because we've forgotten what we have learned, but we are forgetful from neglect. And so this past year when we studied the Gospel of Matthew, and we looked at the five major teaching sections, starting from chapter 5 all the way through chapter 25. We kind of neglected the beginning of the Gospel. And that is our Gospel lesson today. And that's about a man who is often forgotten. His name is Joseph. He is the key figure in the Christmas story, and yet so often, he is the one who is forgotten. We remember the beautiful pictures of Christmas. Jesus born in the manger of Mary. We remember the angels that appeared, the shepherds. We think of the wise men that came, the magi. We think of all these things. And we tend to forget about Joseph. It's not that he is inconsequential, but we re re realize how important Joseph is to this entire Christmas story. Last week, we heard about Mary, how the angel Gabriel appeared to her in a, and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Gabriel announced to Mary, that she was chosen by God to become the mother of our Lord, that she who was still a virgin would conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit and would give birth to a son and to give him the name Jesus. And she pondered all that in her heart and she was at peace and said, 
may it be to me as you have said. Even though she knew all the consequences that would come her way, all the shame that would be associated with becoming pregnant, even though she was betrothed to Joseph, she was married legally, and yet they did not yet come together in stage two of the wedding. When the husband would have this feast and then bring his wife home. And so here we have Joseph, who is often forgotten. The Lord works through him as well. He is having a dream where an angel of the Lord appears to him. After he had discovered that Mary was indeed pregnant, expecting a child, and it was not his because he had been honoring the wedding marriage vows that he had not yet taken her home. And yet he decided that he would do something that was very sacrificial. He would divorce her quietly, even though everyone already knew they were married. The invitations had been sent. Everyone was planning to come to a wedding. It was just a matter of time. But he decides to divorce her quietly. To save Mary from the embarrassment of what had happened. That she might be accused of being an adulteress. And the penalty in its most severest form would be that she would be stoned to death. But Joseph takes compassion and decides to divorce her quietly. Even though it would mean shame for him as well, even though it would mean losing face, even though it would have some consequences. And so it was that he chose to do that sacrificial. And yet as he went, that angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and told him, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And you are to give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And when Joseph woke, he did as the angel said, and took Mary to be his wife and took her home, but knew her not until she had given birth. Such a heroic act, knowing, believing, trusting that God was at work, believing what Mary had tried to explain to him, now confirmed by an angel in a dream. Now, able to be supportive of Mary, knowing that she was carrying in her womb a child, the Son of God, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, the miraculous work of God in such a unique, powerful way. But he knew it was also the fulfillment of the Scriptures. From our Old Testament lesson, that a virgin shall conceive and she shall give birth to a son and you shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. And that's a powerful lesson we can remember. Do you ever feel forgotten in your life? Have you been left off the invitation list? Have you not received any greeting cards except from businesses and advertisements? Have you been forgotten by others? There are times when we feel we are forgotten, when no one cares, when we feel alone. There are times when we struggle with those kinds of things during the holiday season, when everyone seems to be going to gatherings and parties and family gatherings, and we might feel left out and forgotten. 
We all have those times when we might feel that way. But you are not forgotten. For God is with us. God is with you. God never forgets you. He is always there present in your life. He is there to comfort you. You can speak to God in prayer. You can embrace God in your heart. For God is with you. And he is there to care for you, to comfort you, to love you, to reassure you that you matter and that you are important and that you are loved by him unconditionally, that your sins are forgiven through Jesus and his death and resurrection, his ascension to heaven, that you matter to him more than you can ever imagine. So no matter what you are going through, what depths that you are going through, the Lord is with you. And he promises never to leave you or desert you. He has promised to fulfill every promise he has made to you. Read the scriptures. Read those promises of God. Embrace them in your life. Recognizing that God has not forgotten you. And that God has a great plan and purpose for your life. One that you may not even see or realize. One that may not even be revealed or unfold until even after our death. There's a famous artist. You might have heard of him. His name is Vincent van Gogh. He was born in 1853. He died at a very young age in 1890, only 37 years old. Vincent grew up in a Christian home in France. He was a PK, a pastor's kid. His father was a minister. His grandfather was a minister. There was a long string of ministers in his family. And growing up, Vincent wanted to also become a minister like his father's. And he wrote many, many letters that record these things in his life that he sent to his brother, Theo, 700 of these letters. And in these letters, it, it sh he shares how he desires to be a pastor and he had this great passion for ministry, to follow in the footsteps but it was a struggle for Vincent. Even though he was raised in a Christian home, when it came time for his formal training, he failed the seminary entrance exam. Quite an embarrassment when you come from a line of ministers. And so he looked at some alternatives. He volunteered to work as a missionary. And he was a missionary to the coal miners in southern Belgium. And there he worked for a period of time. But his work was done in such a strange way compared to the others. It was kind of outside the box. He would work tirelessly, neglecting eating or sleeping. He sold everything that he had to support those Coal miners. He even took his bed sheets where he had stayed and he shredded them to make them into bandages that the coal miners needed. And so that upset those he worked with and upset the church. And eventually they removed him from the position. More shame. Failing to get into seminary, failing as a missionary, being rejected by the church and even by his family. And so Vincent van Gogh turned to painting. That was his hobby. And by the age of 27, he started to do that, to try and support himself. His brother Theo was an art dealer and basically supported him, providing for all his needs. And so Vincent van Gogh, painted and 
had all kinds of drawings, over 2,100 of them that are known. And during that 10 years, before he died an early tragic death, he sold a grand total of one painting. And when he died, he pretty much was broke and a failure, even as a painter and artist. And he was soon to be forgotten, except for a relative, who after his death gathered his artwork and began to promote the artwork. The reason it did not sell was during that time, the favorite painting types were called impressions. And he did not follow that style, just as he and his mission work was kind of outside the box. So his artwork was also passionate, but different than the current trend. And so it was not until after his death that his paintings became recognized and well-known. And now sell for our value that millions of dollars and he is recognized as one of the greatest artists of all time. He was unforgotten. And that is the power of God in our lives. That there will be times in our lives when something in the future that we won't even know about will bear fruit because of something you have done. That has bear fruit through God working in you now. Whether it be a sacrifice, whether it be sharing your faith, whether it be a kind word, whether it's some volunteer work you have done, some gift you have given, you do not yet know the great power of God. And you will be unforgotten. Just as Joseph is now unforgotten, we raise him up recognizing his power, recognizing his blessing to the church, his example of faithfulness, of his example of obedience, his example of love and compassion. Those are all the powerful ways in which Joseph is unforgotten because God is with us. In the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus, by his power and for his glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard safe your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.